Hi guys, my name is Boro Dante and welcome back to SCP, specifically the SCP-3008. I decided I wanna start painting something, and I remembered this one. If you guys don't know what SCP is, it's a fictional secret organization that looks for any kind of anomalies all over the world, tries to contain them somehow so they wouldn't hurt anyone. Generally, they're known as the necessary evil. And the website of SCP Foundation is uh, just a series, like over 6,000 documents describing all of these anomalies they found, and uh, they describe their special containment procedures, description and then some kind of journals or test results or whatever it's really fun kind of like X files but it's an the community based website that anyone can contribute to so it's a lot of fun I did quite a few episodes on illustrating SCPs on this channel and this is another one so SCP 3008 is an IKEA SCP actually so the basic idea is that it's one big store of IKEA somewhere is like an anomaly where you enter it and there is no one there and you keep walking around and it's actually as you find out later is infinite and then you can't find the way out so it literally disappears and there are just a few of other people in there that uh, grouped to create some kind of basic civilization to uh, live in there and also protect themselves from the workers of IKEA which are not exactly workers let me read this one little part from the journal of one person that survived the place. I did see a person moving not too far away though, so I had it over. Thought it was a staff member at first, it was wearing the uniform. And hell, maybe it was, maybe freakish seven feet tall monsters with long arms, short legs and no faces are just the kind of thing they want working at Super Ikea. Damn thing completely ignored me though, and with no eyes or ears I can't even be sure it knew I was there. Thought about shoving it or something to get its attention, but its hands were big enough to crush a watermelon so I decided against it. It just kept moving along and eventually I lost sight of it so I decided to carry on the way it was going. So that was the first encounter in this journal but there is much more going on in here and actually they become aggressive at certain circumstances I don't remember I think at night but I'm not too concerned about reading the whole huge thing if you guys want to do that you can visit the website the link is in the description. My idea is to just paint the place this infinite IKEA and a few of these very special workers hanging around. And I'll try to work as much on the shape design, on composition and dynamics of the picture, on interesting lighting and stuff like that, just to make sure the picture is actually artistically successful. So I want to apply the whole idea of dynamics and shape design that I've been recently very into. So I'll be doing just that after a quick word from this channel sponsor Wingfox and their new course exquisite illustration tutorial for trading card game design. Now this is a very special one. Listen up, okay? The artist goes by name Nemo and this is the illustration you'll be looking at. It's a Chinese artist that actually attended classes from Ruanja. And you may notice a very strong resemblance of one of the artwork. This one was the specific artwork they did in their Ruanja course. And yeah, I think this may be as close as we can possibly get as just an open kind of course like that at $45. As close as possible to the Ruanja school. So you can see how I'm really looking forward to this one. It will start in like under two months from now. Right now is in the stage of translation to English. So if you think you're interested in this course, the affiliate link is in the description. Again, the course is not available yet, this is just the fundraising for the translation, which will grant you the full access to the course later. So yeah, that's very exciting, I'm gonna be looking out for that. But for now, let's thumbnail some IKEAs. So my plan is to look up a whole bunch of different references of actual IKEA and IKEA employees right here to have all kinds of libraries of what I can work with and look for some kind of nice composition that would have interesting dynamics and everything. So yeah, I'll just go ahead and start doing that. SCP-3008 is a large retail unit previously owned by and branded as IKEA, a popular furniture retail chain. 
a person entering SCP-3008 through the main entrance and then passing out of the side of the doors will find themselves translocated to SCP-3008-1. This displacement will typically go unnoticed as no change will occur from the perspective of the victim. They will generally not become aware until they try to return to the entrance. SCP-3008-1 is a space resembling the inside of an IKEA furniture store, extending far beyond the limits of what could physically be contained within the dimensions of the retail unit. Current measurements indicate an area at least 10 square kilometers, with no visible external terminators detected in any direction. Inconclusive results from the use of laser rangefinders has led to the speculation that the space may be infinite. So yeah, that's that's how I'm seeing it. Overall, I'm pretty liking the picture, although I feel like I'm not in control of the lighting and like the actual colors. I wonder like, I never feel really like I understand what I'm doing when I'm thumbnailing in black and white, like something's like these yellow shirts, how exact, how bright are they gonna be? I mean, it's kind of up to me in terms of how I will light them, but yeah. It's kind of a kind of a weird one. Generally, I like it. The only thing is, um, maybe um, a stronger perspective would be better in terms of how I position the staff. So we'll see about that. Let's try another version. SCP-3008-1 is inhabited by an unknown number of civilians trapped within prior to containment. Gathered data suggests they have formed a rudimentary civilization within SCP-3000-1, including the construction of settlements and fortifications for the purpose of defending against SCP-3008-2. SCP-3008-2 are humanoid entities that exist within the SCP-3008-1. While superficially resembling humans, they possess exaggerated and inconsistent bodily proportions, often described as being too short or too tall. They possess no facial features and in all observed cases wear a yellow shirt and blue trousers, consistent with the IKEA employee uniform. This one is actually kind of cool. The only thing is I would do it more tilted the way I did with the previous ones. And I don't know, maybe even cropped that guy in front a little bit. Yeah, it seems a bit better this way. Okay, let's try another one. Uh, I feel like it's really hard to apply this whole shape design, although it's quite shape designy if you ask me, but I feel like I, I I can't find just that moment where I really get to work with it. It's just whatever it will happen to become. Like I'm not in control and it really pisses me off. Like I'm missing out on actually creating something cool. Like on one hand, I should be working with just the way the composition will be. On the other hand, I really need to consider what the reality of IKEA looks like. You know, I can't just drop spots all over the place and then expect them to work. But I mean, I should just think through a couple of consistent rules. For instance, generally the ceiling in IKEA is dark with just high contrast, super bright LED lights positioned somewhere midway to the super tall ceiling in a perfect array. So that's one thing. And the floor is usually like neutral gray or something. So it kind of looks like this to start with. And then pretty much I'm free to do whatever I want, pretty much. 
<laughs> yeah, it's really about like understanding where your freedoms are and taking advantage of those. I want to try like a square brush without tilt maybe even. You know, like this since most things are kind of square and perfectly aligned. It doesn't really matter actually. So, while I'm actually, I really like all three pictures, although it may be just the cheerleader effect. You know how whenever you post a photo on any social network, if you post two versions, like different poses of yourself or something, one next to another, they will always look better than either of them on their own. Eh, I don't know. Like, it looks cool as this being all together, but I want to end up with one picture that would be satisfying on its own. I feel like showing some scale, and I like in this uh, reference right here, it has these big aisles or whatever they are, huge shelves in rows pretty far away in their own array. So it's like going over there in a distance, and then in front there are other things like lower things, some kind of uh, big baskets with towels and stuff like that. So maybe like that, but the only thing is I want the vanishing point being like in here, not somewhere far away the way it is in the reference. So that's one thing I need to change. <laughs> Man, whenever I see like any photo when there's actual employees wearing the yellow shirts in the store, they're always with the balloons celebrating something. Not a single shot of them actually working. It's so weird. This is a weird one, <laughs> that's a bit too much. Maybe closer to a normal size. <laughs> okay, I need to decide. I think I like the third one the most, although I need to rework this guy a bit. Because like this part, like this whole part with these guys over there it's like really strong i really like it but in here this is maybe just the pose of his should be a bit different maybe the shape is a bit different so i'm gonna grab this one and change it a bit let's make the head even smaller maybe like almost just an end of a neck the first one is actually also really cool. Maybe I should add another one laying on the ground like that, the way it did in there. Yeah, how about if he just crawls out of this corner? Not too much, I don't want to make this area busy. It's like the area of the rest, so it shouldn't have too much of that. There you go, that's actually pretty cool. We still have quite a big space in here. Then there's another one. And I kind of like the framing of it in general. Yeah, this is pretty dope. I want to try and throw some color on it. It's not necessary at this point by any means, but... I feel like all the brightnesses are completely wrong, like things are really dull. And yeah, overall the atmosphere should be like of this color, probably, maybe a bit greenier. Alright, we got our shot. I don't know, I think it's best to leave this episode here. I'll probably get some sketch ready before the next episode, but yeah, I think this one is gonna be the banger. Looking pretty dope. This one is not good at all, really flat and like so much obstructions between us and the main guys that are so far away, like this thing right here is important that everything else is a pretty bad composition. Even though I tried to take control of it, it's really weird how things go. I guess the best way to just get a hang of it is just doing several thumbnails and seeing what works. 
Kind of like this one, but it feels like it's um, just not showing enough. I decided to tilt the camera upwards here to show the ceiling and kind of, I don't know, it's not really showing a lot. And that's why I almost have just three guys. Actually, there's a fourth one right there, but mostly it's these three and it's not very interesting, like not a lot of depth. Comparing to this, we have really a nice jump between the characters. It's like in a spiral in here. It's really cool actually. So that's that's pretty strong. This one is fun with the guy laying here, but we copied it right here. And aside of that, everything else is pretty much weaker than what we had in here. I really like the strong figure of this guy in here. I'll make sure to keep the background around him pretty dark and not too busy, so he would be like a strong point. And yeah, maybe a bit better work on the ceiling, but that's almost like just details. I'll work on that, so the geometry should go a bit more towards there, and maybe one more lamp would be seen in here, for instance, I don't know. We'll see about that. Maybe generally we would move the this row a bit over there and introduce another row here, probably something like that. Let's actually maybe do it right now. Yeah, something like that. It feels a bit more like the big store. This was kind of lonely with those lamps. I don't know, we'll see. That's that's what I need construction for for the next episode because this is this is a very questionable geometry. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, this is gonna be like I look at it and I like it has everything in it just right. Gives the right feeling about the store, about the amount of the dudes and variety of them. It's really cool. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with the result. I'll make sure I have a precise construction, at least like a base for the environment for the next episode, so we would move a bit faster. And yeah, we'll start with actually doing the actual painting. This is just thumbnails. I'm actually not gonna be using this in terms of I'll actually start the painting again. It's just gonna be the same composition. Yeah, I won't be doing like black and white and then colorizing. I'm gonna be working in color right away. Generally, I like the idea of working like without a sketch, without anything, you know, quickly and everything. But that's, I understand right now that you do that only with very comfortable and easy to you compositions or whatever. Like if you have a lot of experience in doing that, that one thing, then you can do it right away. Even a professional artist, I think if they work on something complex or something that's, you know, searching for something new, not the way they usually work at all times, or that just requires a lot of precise geometry and complex composition in general. That stuff definitely requires, first of all, thumbnailing, and secondly, construction, to make sure you don't do some stupid mistakes that you will still have to struggle with and in the end still provide some construction to, only it's gonna be worse, so I'm not doing any of that stupidity, we're doing everything by the book. I just have to make sure it won't be like a precise drawing, it needs to be just the construction. And then all the details and little things, little geometry, that stuff I can search already based on the bigger guides. Yeah, I think it's gonna work pretty well. Gotta make sure to not forget about the shape design and composition and overall dynamics that we have here with this really cool thing going on. It's like perfect Fibonacci golden rule and everything. <laughs> did not expect that to happen. I think that's why I didn't like this version before, because it was really like falling out of, like it's leading out of the picture, really unpleasant. And this way, since I moved the torso like this, it sort of catches you and you stay inside of the picture. That's sort of the language. And yeah, I think it's gonna be a pretty banger of a picture. So yeah, this is it. Tell me guys what you think about what I have here. Maybe you have other thoughts. I only worked with vertical compositions, but that's because I don't need a panoramic view on the store. I need the dudes. <laughs> so, so I think I made the right choice. It was just immediately I thought this is the way it should go. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. This is just so much fun. Everything becomes so much more fun when you think on the shapes right away. I wonder if I'll at all be able to work without a flat brush like this in the future. <laughs>